con una diferencia. En la era de Internet, los consumidores están dispuestos a luchar contra la obsolescencia programada. The first movie we made that really broke through was a movie about the iPod. And I was completely broke. I had gotten this iPod, it was like 500 bucks, 400 bucks. And uh, about eight months later, 12 months later maybe, the battery died in it. And uh, I called Apple to ask them to replace the battery. And their policy at the time was to tell their customers to buy a new iPod. You might as well go get a new one. Um, Apple doesn't offer? No. Apple doesn't offer a, a new battery for the iPod? No. It wasn't that the battery died that was annoying, because in my Nokia cell phone, the battery dies, you buy a new battery. Even in my Apple laptop, when the battery would die, you replace the battery. Um, but in the iPod, this expensive piece of hardware, when the battery died, you had to replace the entire unit. So it was my brother's idea to make a movie about just that. We went around with a stencil spray painting on every iPod advertisement we saw in town. iPod's unreplaceable battery lasts only 18 months. We put the video on our own little site, iPodsDirtySecret.com. In the first month, six weeks, it was at five, six million views. And the site went absolutely bananas. Una abogada de San Francisco, Elizabeth Pritzker, oyó hablar del video y decidió demandar a Apple por el tema de la batería del iPod. Medio siglo después del caso del cártel, la obsolescencia programada llegaba de nuevo a los tribunales. When we brought this litigation, this was two years after the iPod was introduced, uh, Apple had sold about three million iPods uh, nationwide in the United States. Buena parte de esos iPods tenían problemas con la batería y sus propietarios estaban dispuestos a ir a los tribunales. Uno de ellos era Andrew Westley. We selected from amongst the consumers who had called us individuals who would serve as representatives in a class action. A class action is really a device that's fairly unique to the United States where a small group of people stands in the shoes of a large group to bring one claim before a court. My role in that case was as class representative on behalf of thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people. The case came to be known as Wesley versus Apple. When my friends and family learned that this was a major case, they thought I was, you know, becoming a radical. You know, here I am going to sue, you know, I was the next Aaron Brockovich. En diciembre de 2003, Elizabeth Pritzker presentó la querella ante el Tribunal del Condado de San Mateo a un tiro de piedra de la sede central de Apple. We asked Apple for a number of technical documents regarding the battery life in the iPod and we received a lot of technical data about the battery design, about the testing of the battery and learned through that discovery that the type of the lithium battery that was contained within this iPod was designed by design to really only have a short period of life. I do think that Apple's development of the iPod was intended to be a one of planned obsolescence. Después de meses de tensión, las dos partes llegaron a un acuerdo. Apple creó un servicio de recambio y prolongó la garantía a dos años. Los querellantes recibieron una compensación. One thing that really bothers me personally is that uh, Apple really promotes itself as a young, hip, uh, forward-thinking company. And for a company like that not to have a good environmental policy that allows consumers to return products for proper recycling and disposal uh, really uh, is really counterintuitive and counter to their message. La obsolescencia programada provoca un flujo constante de residuos que acaban en países del tercer mundo como Ghana, en África. It's been between eight and nine years now 
when I noticed that loads and loads of containers were coming to this country with electronic waste. We're talking about uh, end-of-life computers, end-of-life television sets, uh, which nobody wants in the developed countries. Un tratado internacional prohíbe enviar residuos electrónicos al tercer mundo. Pero los mercaderes usan un simple truco, declararlos productos de segunda mano. Más del 80% de los residuos electrónicos que llegan a Ghana no se pueden reparar y acaban abandonados en vertederos por todo el país. We are at the dam site here in Agogoshi. In the past, we had this beautiful river called the Odor River, you know, that meandered its way through um, this area. It was teeming in the past, it had so much fish. So we actually attended a school not very far away from here. So we'd come play football and hang around the river. The fishermen would organize boat rides, I remember very well, but now it's all finished, it's all gone. And that makes me really, really sad. And it makes me angry. Hoy en día, aquí no hay niños jugando después de clase. En su lugar, jóvenes de familias pobres vienen a buscar chatarra. Queman la funda de plástico de los cables para obtener el metal que llevan dentro. Los niños más pequeños rebuscan en los restos para encontrar cualquier pequeño trozo de metal que los mayores hayan olvidado. the shipments have said that, well, we're trying to bridge the digital divide between Europe, America, and then the rest of Africa and Ghana, of course. But the reality is that these computers that are sent here simply do not work. There's no point in receiving um, electronic waste when you cannot deal with it, more so when you did not produce it and your country is being used as a world's trash bin. The trash that for so long in the industrial age has been hidden from view is now coming into our lives and we can actually no longer easily avoid it. The waste economy is, is reaching its last legs because they don't physically have anywhere else to put the waste. I think in the course of time, we've come to realize that the planet that we're living on cannot sustain that forever. There's a limit to natural resources and there's a limit to energy resources that we have. Posterity will never forgive us. Posterity will suddenly find out about the throwaway attitudes, the throwaway lifestyles of people in the advanced countries. Gente de todo el mundo ha empezado a actuar contra la obsolescencia programada. Mike Anane lucha desde el final de la cadena. Ha empezado recopilando información. This is where I keep um, the e-waste. They have asset tags or property tags. This says Amu Center Nordwest Zealand. It's from Denmark. This is from Germany. Sent here simply to be dumped. Westminster College. Apple. Apple should know better. It's a company that claims to be so green. There's a lot of Apple products that are being dumped here. I have a database that contain the asset tax, the contact um, addresses, telephone numbers of the companies that owned the electronic waste that have been dumped in Ghana. Mike piensa convertir esta información en pruebas para una denuncia ante un tribunal. We need to take some action, some punitive measure. We need to sue people so they stop dumping e-waste in Ghana.